So, come on, who hasn't had this in some form at least once in their life? We've got subpar pizza and a can of sugar. Happy days. Especially when you're pouring yourself home at 2am. But it's got me wondering, just how well do these two really go together? Well, if you're going to eat shit, you may as well do it properly. Okay, so the idea here is to somehow get cola into every layer of a margarita pizza. Just to see how it comes out. I actually want to taste the cola in this, so, you know, what's the point? So, concentrating the flavour seems a logical first step. So, I'm bringing a bottle of cola to the boil and just cooking it down until it's reduced by half. All in all, I went through about a litre of this stuff for this pizza, so if you're following along at home, start off with two litres of coke. It took me about 45 minutes to boil it down, let it cool down and keep it close to hand. I'm going to be coming back to it a couple of times. So for the base, I'm going to put 300 grams of strong bread flour, a full sachet of dry instant yeast and a pinch of salt into the bowl of a stand mixer. Jump cut a well into the middle of that and fill it with about a tablespoon of olive oil. That looks good and 200 milliliters of that cola syrup. Just tap it. Dough hook down and start mixing. We'll time off suit the tedious bit and leave it to do its thing for about a quarter of an hour. That's why I'm after a pretty wet dough. Get that shaped and into an oiled bowl and leave it somewhere warm to rise for a few hours. Normally I do a cold ferment overnight in the fridge because it gives the yeast a bit more time to develop those nice bready flavours and it saves you having to knead it. But since I want this base to taste more of cola than a bread, I'm going to hedge my bets a bit. So on to the cheese. I've gone with a block of low moisture mozzarella. I'm going to grate off about 200 grams and pour over enough coke syrup just to cover it. Get that mixed and get that into the fridge to marinate for a couple of hours. Yes, I know you can get pre-grated stuff, but that's usually covered in a layer of crap, ma mainly to stop them from clumping together in the bag. But importantly for us, it really f with the way it melts. This block stuff is just cheese. Tell you what, while we're at it, let's do the same thing with a couple of basil leaves. There you go. Sauce. I was originally just going to use a much thicker reduction of that coke syrup but it felt like I was taking too much of a step away from pizza if it didn't have some sort of a tomato or ricotta element I went with tomato in the end so quite an important step I think is to try and temper the sweetness out of this a little bit so I'm gonna let this infuse with half an onion two cloves of garlic which I've just crushed with the side of a knife half a stick of celery roughly chopped and two bay leaves there's a sprig of thyme a sprig of oregano and a couple of peppercorns which i forgot to film going into the pot and there we go this time i'm just going to boil the living f out of this and reduce it until it looks like tar there you go i think that looks about right to me i think if i take it any further i'll be close to the soft boil candy stage which might actually be worth trying one day but let's get this monstrosity out of the way first Press it through a sieve to get the crap out of it and actually let's see what this onion tastes like first. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. That onion's delicious. Really sweet caramel flavour. If I slice it a little bit thinner, I think that'd be fantastic on a burger. And there, it's uh, I guess you could call it a cola demi-glass if you want to of every chef in the world. Let's see what this tastes like. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Obviously, it's still pretty sweet, but those aromatics have really done their job. Celery comes through, oregano really comes through. That's fantastic. Next up, I'm heating a tablespoon of olive oil over a low to medium heat, and I'm grating in two cloves of garlic. By the way, these microplanes are fantastic for things like garlic or ginger, just, just mincing things into purees. If you do a lot of cooking, get one. Anywho, garlic. When I'm usually doing garlic for my tomato based sauces, I like to get it to this, this golden colour. Just the focus so you can see, there you go. It's a lot further than you'd normally take garlic, but for, for this sort of sauce, it really adds a nice flavour dimension, and I think it's going to work great with this coke. Anyway, garlic browned, in with a heaped tablespoon of tomato puree and cook that off, and then in with the flesh from a can of tomatoes. Now the only liquid I want in this is that cola reduction, so make sure you are only using the flesh. You don't want any of the juice, you don't want any of the seed pulp. Cola in, mix it and just lower the heat. Now, normally at this stage you'd put a couple of grams of caster sugar in it at this point, as well, but, but come on, it's coke. Let that infuse with another stick of oregano, another stick of thyme and a little bunch of basil. 
and video edit till later that day after the herbs have infused and been plucked out. Just going to adjust the seasoning and then this gets blended until it's fairly smooth and there. Should be enough sauce for one 12 inch pizza. So dough's done, topping's done, let's build it. Now I don't own a pizza steel or a pizza stone, but I found that turning this grill tray upside down usually gets pretty good results. Crank the oven up as high as it'll go and let that preheat. Dough's looking happy but gormless. Now let's get him portioned out and shaped. I've made enough sauce for one pizza. I've made enough cheese for one pizza. So obviously I made enough dough for two pizzas. It, it freezes well though. Get rid of half and shape it up. Pizza shaping's been done to death, I know, so I'll just breeze through this part. Lightly flour, shape her into a ball, get the ball flattened out, then start stretching it into a rough circle. Let gravity do most of the work for you. There. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And fade through to there you go. That's a good looking base. Those of you who stuck it out this far, get the pizza peel that obviously you own and get that floured. Cornmeal or semolina flour are usually the go-tos because their granular texture acts like little ball bearings and it helps the pizza slide off a lot easier. But since I've still got this bread flour to hand, I'm just going to use that. Base goes on the peel, sauce goes on the base, spread that out, leaving a decent border and let's go check the cheese. Looks like cheese and cola soup, lovely. Let's get some on here. Yep. Yeah, so visually you can already see it's made it a deeper colour. Let's try a piece of this. Yeah, yeah, that's really sweet. Still got a bit of that cola tang in the background too. With the creaminess of that mozzarella, it works really well. Let me get that drained onto the pizza. Looking pretty good. Into the oven. This is where that peel usually comes in useful. And 10 to 12 minutes later, you're done. Get that onto a board and yeah, I'm happy with that. Season that quite generously with some cracked black pepper and a couple of flakes of smoked sea salt. Scatter on those basil leaves we soaked earlier. And by the way, if you're after cocktail recipes, basil flavoured cola tastes a hell of a lot nicer than mozzarella flavoured cola. Anyway. Normally at this stage I'd go over the crust with a garlic and herb oil or butter, but for this one I'm going to take the opportunity to double down on that cola flavour. I've just filled an atomizer with some regular cola just to sell on that taste. You could use a pastry brush, but this gives you a lot more control, you don't risk soaking everything. Obviously the cola's making this sweeter than your average pizza, but it's it's not nearly as sweet as you might expect. That sauce has got a really rich, treacly flavour. It's spicier than I was expecting, which is really nice. Imagine a decent barbecue sauce and you're on the right line. Spray gets a little bit lost in the mix and the basil didn't take on much cola flavour at all, but it, it's still nice to have on it. That sweetness and the acidity from marinating the cheese is still there and that's, that's a nice top note too. Dough looks a bit darker than I'd like, but looking at a cross section, it seems to be going all the way through. So I think we can thank Caramel Colouring E150D for that. Certainly not overcooked. There's some nice blistering here and there too. All in all, yeah. If you want to cook a relatively simple gimmick for whatever reason, it's worth a go at least once. Or if you don't fancy boiling the coke down for hours on end, you could probably do a lazy version of the sauce by stirring a bit of muscovado sugar and black pepper into your tomatoes and get a pretty similar result, which I might do next time. And that's Coca-Cola pizza. If you try it, let me know on the socials what you think and let me know what other foods you want to see get forked. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, get forked. <laughs>